Hello, today we are going to start pro get started programming for the KDE community and uh, set up KDE SRC minus build. So this is the wiki page of the KDE project and community. This is the end result, the Plasma desktop. This is the start menu from the Plasma desktop. This is the main panel of the Plasma desktop. This is the settings system settings application of the KDE Plasma desktop. Some of the applications, this is the file manager, Dolphin. This is the App Store Discover. Okay, most of these applications are programmed using the Qt framework and uh, using the programming languages C++ and QML. This is the official homepage of the project kde.org. We go to get involved. Then we go to ways to contribute develop. In here it says that we should uh, first of all create some uh, online accounts. The first one that we want to create is on Matrix, which is a uh, communications application. Okay, not this Matrix, the other Matrix. An open network for secure decentralized communication. So this is uh, succeeding IRC, Internet Relay Chat. You should create a um, account. And then you need to connect to the KD Matrix server. And the very first matrix room that you should join is this one kd new contributors in here you will get help on getting started programming for kd how to set up your operating system how to set up kd src minus build how to edit the source code how to use integrated development environments how to do your first git commits your first gitlab merge requests etc so this should be your priority to create a matrix account and get into this matrix room. So that's https colon slash slash community dot kd dot org slash matrix and under general there's kd new contributors. Or from community dot kd dot org slash get involved slash development in here where it says where to find the development team matrix okay so if something does not work perfectly in your first try you should ask in here next up you should have uh, programmed before if you have uh, c++ knowledge programming that's even better operating system because we require a new version of the Qt framework, the best supported operating systems for our goal, which is to do git commits towards the KD git repositories, is Arch Linux, which is a uh, rolling release Linux operating system, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, the same thing. It's still a rolling release, but not from the family of Arch Linux, but from the family of SUSE. And then KD Neon or Fedora KD. We are currently on Fedora. And uh, this is the Fedora Linux 40 Beta KD Plasma Spin. Okay, so make sure you have one of these four better supported Linux operating systems installed either on real hardware or in a virtual machine. OK, 
Okay. Setting up a development environment on other operating systems is an advanced topic, so go back to these four that are better supported. You can do development in a virtual machine, not a problem. Right now I am in a virtual machine and everything works really great. Okay. The next step is to set up KDSRC-Build, which is a build framework from KDE. The KDE Git repositories are here. When you want to program for KDE, what you really want to do is to do Git commits towards this uh, Git repository. So you want to write to these Git repositories. The platform that's being used is GitLab and you're going to do GitLab merge requests. The URL is https colon slash slash invent.kd.org. Let's look at such an Git repository. For instance, the Bovo game has this URL. But if we want to build this game, we will have a very a large list of dependencies. We will require Qt version 6.5. We will require many KD frameworks, which are libraries, which have Git repositories in here, in invent.kd.org slash frameworks. So in order to actually build Bovo, you will need to build maybe 20 Git repositories. That's why we are using a build framework, which is named KDSRC-Build, such that we tell the framework, hey, please build Bovo. And the framework will know, okay, I need to find a Qt that's at least version 6.5. Okay, we found that because in Fedora 40, that's installed by default, because we're using KD Plasma 6 desktop, which requires Qt at least version 6.6 .6. okay and then the rest of the KD framework git repositories the build framework kdsrc minus build is going to git clone them locally configure make make install okay some of the KD frameworks that are used are K-Core add-ons, K-Crash, K-Dbus add-ons, K-Doctors, K-Internationalization, K-Widgets add-ons, K-XML GUI. Okay. So we clicked on this button, set up a development environment with KDSRC minus build. We're taken to this web page, which is empty except this URL. So let's go there. In we were here. We are using Linux. We have a terminal emulator application. In our case, it's going to be console. So this application, I click on the start menu and then favorites is selected by default and I have console at the favorites terminal. Okay. Let's have side by side the documentation. So the half right of the screen is um, taken by a web browser. In my case, it's Mozilla Firefox private browsing. And the half left of the screen is a console, which is a terminal. We can increase the font size by control scroll, mouse scroll. Okay. We're setting up KDSRC minus build. The first step uh, that we need to actually execute is for our Linux operating system, this thing, Fedora, we need to run these steps. Okay, sudo will run the rest of the commands, so dnf install, git, perl, etc. As the user root, we're now at as the Linux user administrator. In order to become root, we're using sudo and this requires the password of the user administrator. So let's type that in, press enter. And now it's going to install these packages. So git perl and then 
three more per modules but then these have many many dependencies so these packages are rpm packages from the fedora linux 40 remote repositories package repositories and these are all of the other dependencies maybe transitive dependencies of these five rpms we agree to installing 207 packages so press y and then enter next up it says that we should configure git no we will not configure git configuring git is if we want to write to the git repositories for now we're just setting up kdsrc-build in order to read from the git repositories. So first of all, we'll need to git clone some git repositories, build them, install them, run them, debug them, look at the source code, learn them, and eventually find some issue and eventually fix some issue and do a git commit locally. And only after all of this is done, the next step is to take the local git commits and put them into invent.kd.org so that would be you setting up uh, git so you set your username and user email but for this you'll need to create accounts online accounts for the kd community so there's kd um, identity In here you create a um, an account and then using this account you will be able to edit the KD wikis if you want. There's three wikis, community, user and user base. No, the three wikis, you can edit those. And you also get access to um, create a fork of existing KDE repositories under your own namespace. Push git commits towards your uh, GitLab forks. And then using GitLab flow, you can uh, do a GitLab um, merge request from your git uh, fork to the official KD git repository. Okay, all of these using this KD online account. Okay, so we'll skip this step because this is only after we manage to do some local git commits. Continue with setting up KDSRC minus build. So as an example, one of the applications is KCalc, which looks like this, which is the desktop applic uh, calculator application. Maybe is installed out of the box. It is. You can start it from the KD Plasma start menu. You just write calc. Many keyboards have dedicated buttons. For a desktop calculator, mine it's uh, function F3, which will start a um, the, cal the desktop calculator. Okay, and this uh, application has the source code in this uh, GitLab uh, project inventokd.org slash utility slash kcalc. And again, if you want to build kcalc using the build framework kdsrc-build, that will see that um, kcalc depends on Qt. We'll try to find it at version 6.5 at least. And then it will try to find many KD frameworks, so many KD libraries, k core add-ons, k-crash, k-config, k-config widgets, k-gui add-ons, k-internationalization, k-notifications, k-xml GUI. But it will also require to find the development packages, so that's header files, .h files, or other packages that are not part of the KD community and are not part of the Qt framework.
So these are GNU GMP and GNU MPFR. But KDSRC minus build, the build framework knows all of these. Okay. Next up, we need to run these things. Okay, so we've created a directory KD in my home directory. We've created the directory tilde slash dot local slash share. No need to create this because almost certainly the, this directory already existed. We moved there. We git cloned this git repository in pen.k.org slash sdk slash kdsrc minus build into tilde slash dot local slash share. And then we changed into the directory where we git cloned. So we can do things, we can do git things in here. List all of the remotes. We do not have git GUI yet. We should install it. Git GUI is a graphical user interface for application for Git. We've installed Git at this step. Where is that step? At this step in here, where we did DNF install Git. Okay, we're at this step. Now it says that we should create a directory tilde slash dot local slash bin and put a symlink there. In here, in the directory where we git clone the git repository for kdsrc minus build, top level there's a file named kdsrc minus build that's executable. That's actually a um, script file, so plain text file containing Perl source code. Can be executed. So we've made the symlink from here towards tilde slash dot local slash bin slash kdsrc minus build. And this directory is in the path environment variable. So let's go there. Echo dollar sign if I find it. Path. So the very first directory in the path environment variable is tilde slash dot local slash bin. This directory. Since we've created a symbolic link from this directory towards tilde slash dot local slash bin slash kdsrc minus build. Now kdsrc minus build is, uh, can be executed without any relative or absolute paths. So we can go, and we also have um, file completion, right? So kdsrc minus build, we go which and it's in tilde slash dot local slash bin slash kdsrc minus build. Okay, let's see this note. This note is about um, the Debian family of Linux operating systems, does not uh, contain any information about the Fedora family. So let's collapse it back. And then we need to run this step. So kdsrc minus build initial setup. Okay, it says that it requires 100 more Perl packages. So let's allow it to install. Okay, and now it's installing all of the packages that uh, are needed such that you can build kcalc, the KD frameworks and many, many other KD Git repositories. So there's um, devel packages, RPM packages for X11, for Wayland, for Qt, for the multimedia libraries, for video codecs, etc. Compression algorithms. Okay. And now it uh, does not like the fact that Q accessibility client devel does not exist. And that's because we're on Fedora 40 uh, beta, which was not released yet. And uh, we'll need to tell uh, kdsrc minus build the new name of this package. So the new name of this package is. So the name of the package has changed 
let's see from what to what. Where is it? Used to be like this. And now it's a Q accessibility client Q6 develop. Like this. Okay, how do we fix this? All of this command line has failed. And we'll need to run it again, but we need to replace this part with this thing. Okay, this command line will fail because parentheses are a no go at the command line. So we need to replace all of the parentheses with um, escape character, which is the backslash, like this. Hopefully this is enough. Replace all round parentheses closed with um, backslash and then that character. Okay. And let's see if we can run the command. Paste. Okay, it will install 618 packages. So libraries and devel RPM packages from Fedora 40, which is my Linux operating system this time, such that we can build all of the KDE frameworks and many other KDE Git repositories, which again are uh, written in C++ programming language. Both Qt5 and Qt6. So with this list of packages, we can build most of the KDGit repositories in their Qt5 version and in their Qt6 version. There are many KDGit repositories that have the default branch, which is probably called master for Qt6, and then they also have another branch for uh, Qt5. And it might be needed to fix an issue, for instance, in a very important security issue, both in the master branch, which is Qt6, but also in the Qt5 uh, uh, Git branch. Not often, but it might be needed. That's why we install both Qt5 and Qt6 development libraries. Okay, so it has downloaded packages 825, 24, and now it's installing them one by one. Okay, so it's um, finished installing 824 packages. And we were at a command line that failed, which is this one, kdsrc minus build initial setup. We can see that by going with the up arrow once back in the bash history, and then up arrow a second time, such that we can see the penultimate command that was executed in this console. So we need to run it again. Okay, and says that um, the packages have yet again failed to install, of course, because it's trying to install a package that does not exist. Q accessibility client minus devel. And uh, after that, it has created a configuration file for kdsrc minus build. Let's actually look at this thing. But first of all, let's upgrade from kwrite to kate. So that would be, let's open a new tab, Control shift t in console. Let's become a super user. So the user root, who am I? We'll say root. And now we can 
install Kate. You need to press the key Y and then enter. And I'm also going to remove KWrite. Kate is a superset of KWrite. Yes. Okay, back to where we were. So let's look at this configuration file using the text editor Kate from the KD community. We can middle click to paste the selection. So we select text with the left mouse button and then we can paste it with the middle click of the mouse. Okay, let's collapse this tool window projects and let's look at the configuration file. So it says that we're using Qt6 so this is the default configuration file. You should not change the configuration file unless you know exactly what you're doing. Include dependencies means that if we're building kcalc, it will also build 20 other KDE Git repositories, all of the dependencies. It will install into this directory. Let's look at the actual directories, see how they look like. So there's a tilde slash KDE directory. And in there will be a slash USR directory where software is going to be installed, similar to how RPM packages install files into slash USR. For instance, bash was installed using RPM into slash USR slash bin slash bash. And source directory tilde slash kd slash src. And here will be a directory src created where the kd git repositories will be git cloned and those directories will be kept clean just git operations will be performed on them the intermediate files while building will be generated into this directory tilde slash kd slash build this is the one of the two possibilities for um, cmake build configuration rel with db info this is the default which means the executables are fast small release optimized but there exists debug symbols okay this is not great for debugging like it is not what you want if you want to program for kd what you really want is this other build configuration cmake build configuration which is called debug which means that uh, the executables generated will be a bit slower not have um, optimizations but will have debug symbols so this is what we want if we want to enter inside of a process with a debugger and step by step advance into the process using the debugger number of course let's not make it just four in this virtual machine i have 14 so let's make this the Number of vCPUs, which is 14 minus 2, should be 12. That should be okay. The rest of the defaults we keep as they are. So the only thing that I really change is num cores, make it way bigger than 4. And CMake options, I change the CMake build type from rel with db info to debug. Okay. Where are we now? So we each month or something you want to make sure you have the latest version of kdsrc minus build we'll ignore this part because this is not about uh, starting programming for kd Qt we already have it installed kdsrc minus build minus minus initial setup is installed all of the possible Qt 6 development packages so rpms ending with minus devel and containing Qt 6 in name the same for Qt 5 and um, should be at least 6.6 .6. the version is 6.6.2 so this is covered then it says that we should do this change so system settings search this is the button for system settings search file search and the directory tilde slash kd should not be indexed 
and from what we can see that the directory tilde slash kd is not indexed. The only things that are indexed, indexed are the directory tilde slash documents tilde slash music tilde slash pictures tilde slash videos. But just to be extra safe, we can do that. So stop indexing a folder and select the directory kd in here. And now it says that tilde slash kd is not indexed. Or you can just disable file indexing. If it's a virtual machine, you probably don't care about having a fast search for your JPEG photographs. Okay, so we did that. Next steps is um, let's start building some software using kdsrc-build. It's already installed kdsrc-build, it's installed correctly. Let's put it to use. So there are some kdgit repositories that are libraries, some kdgit repositories that are both libraries and frameworks. Okay. Then there are other kdgit repositories that are applications. We will um, test using the application kcalc. The command line is this one. Okay, so it's downloading a KDG repository named the repo metadata, which uh, tells KDSRC minus build the order in which it should uh, work on the various KDG repositories. So it says using the knowledge stored in here, it found out that in order to build kcalc, it will need to build kconfig, and that kconfig cannot be built until it builds extra CMake modules. So it prepares a tree of dependencies between modules until you get to kcalc and then finds the order in which you need to build modules such that all modules or 23 kdgit repositories build correctly and the final one will be the kdgit repository kcalc. Okay, this is the kdgit repository for kcalc. So we'll have to wait a lot. As it says in here, it can take um, more than an hour to build the first KD applications or in order to build all of the KD frameworks or in order to build even this entire desktop environment, so this shell, which contains the start menu and the panel and this editor and the desktop and the system settings. So that would be, if you want to build the entire desktop environment, that would uh, require building more than 100 KDGit repositories. So we build all of the KD source code from scratch, from zero, from source. But we prefer to take Qt from the binary packages from the Linux distribution, in our case Fedora 40, and other dependencies which are not Qt and not KD should also come from RPM packages from your Fedora Linux installation. Okay, so once it will finish building all of the KDG repositories, including kcalc. The next step that we want to do is to run the freshly built application, which, as mentioned, will be put into tilde slash kd slash usr slash bean kcalc in here. So when you run the command line kdsrc minus build minus minus run kcalc, it will see, okay, kcalc was built into tilde slash kd slash usr slash bin. Let's run that thing, but we cannot run it until we tell it where the libraries are, because the libraries needed in order to run kcalc are not only in tilde in uh, slash usr slash lib, but also in tilde slash kd slash usr slash lib64. Okay, so this command line says, okay, I'm going to start this process, tilde slash kd slash usr slash bin slash kcalc, but this process should 
prefer the libraries from tilde slash kd slash usr slash lib64 over the libraries in slash usr slash lib. And it does that by setting some environment variables. You can investigate those environment variables by uh, using the kdsrc minus build command line parameter minus minus debug which increases the verbosity of the output that kdsrc minus build writes to the terminal okay if we want to only build kcalc but not build all of these 23 modules, we can say no include dependencies. You should not do that. Only after you have built kcalc at least once, building all of the dependencies. When you build a second time kdsrc minus build kcalc, it will also try to build all of these kdgit repositories, but we'll see that no change exists in git or the kdgit repositories the git repositories have been cloned correctly they're up to date the um, git repository was configured built and installed correctly and it will go over this step building kgui add-ons from frameworks really really fast and then it will see the same thing for k internationalization correct git clone was configured installed compiled correctly and it immediately jumps over this step so a second invocation does a build not a rebuild and any inv invocations in general do build not a rebuild if you really want to do a rebuild then you need this command line parameter for kdsrc minus build which is minus minus refresh build okay the git clones happen in tilde slash kd slash src and then the name of the KD Git repository for a K internationalization, for instance, is this thing, KI18N. So this is just a Git clone, nothing else. You can see that. Git uh, remote minus V. Um, in the second tab in console, I am as the super user, so the user root. I can just uh, start installing stuff. DNF install. It git GUI. Yes. Okay, and now let's run git GUI in here to confirm that this is just a git clone, nothing else. So there's no files which are unstaged changes or staged changes. And if we do a um, fetch, nothing happens it's already fetched if we look at the history the local git master branch points to the same git commit where the remotes origin master branch points to okay so this is probably a merge request which is has not been merged into remotes origin master what's remotes origin this thing is remotes origin is uh, https con slash slash invent.k.org slash framework slash k internationalization which is the canonical git repository the official git repository for k internationalization okay so that's src just git clones nothing else whereas in build there's all sorts of um, dirty build files, intermediate, generated files, etc. Files generated by CMake, by Ninja, by GCC, by the compiler, linker, C preprocessor, assembler, etc. And the final binaries are in this bin directory. So there's SO files, which are shared libraries, similar to DLL files in Windows, and then the executables. So these things, which end with test, are uh, executables, 
which are of type uh, CMake test. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This being a library does not really have an executable entry point. So let's look at a Git repository that's not a library. Everything is a library because I want to build just one application, which is Kcalc. The rest are libraries. In Dolphin, by using the F4 key, you hide and show the embedded terminal. That can also be done by going open menu. And then we're going to show the menu always, which is being done in here. More, show menu bar with all actions, control M. And then how do we view the embedded terminal? View, show panels, terminal F4. View, show panels, places. Okay. Where was it? Okay, so the build directory is for intermediate generated files, built artifacts, and then once the compiling building finishes, this directory is being populated, tilde slash kd slash build and the name of the git repository slash bin. And then the files from here are distributed into tilde slash kd slash usr. The libraries for key internationalization are put in here in tilde slash kd slash usr slash lib64. This guy and this guy and this guy and this, this, this. Other files, I know QML plugins are put probably in here. CMake uh, configuration or whatever. CMake files are put in here. Executables in here. Themes, icons, fonts are put in here. This is for .h files, which is C and C++ include header files. The ones for um, key internationalization are in here, these files. Let's see where they are inside of the tilde slash kd slash build directory. Key internationalization. Not in here. I know where probably it takes them straight from the git clone, possibly. I don't know exactly what's um, what are the instructions inside of the CMake files. Okay, let's see if the building has finished. So building has failed because K archive could not build. Why not? Let's open this file in Kate. I select it and then I go Kate. Middle click. Or I can tell console, hey, learn how I can control click on URLs. So we do that like this. Open menu, more, show menu bar, settings, manage profiles, new profile, profile one is a good name, mouse, and uh, miscellaneous, underline links, underline files, open files by direct link, Allow escape, link formats, require, control key for drag and drop. Hopefully this is all. So the only thing that I've changed is I've created a new profile. I kept the default name, which is profile one. And then under mouse, 
miscellaneous underlying files. Okay. And now I want to make profile one the default profile. So we say set as default and we keep the built-in read only as is. So the new profile is not the default. Okay. I'm going to close the directory, the application console. Close window, open it again, and back to the command line where we were. So that was this one kdsrc minus build kcalc. Copy, paste. Okay, so we can see now how if a kdgit repository was cloned correctly, no git operations exist in here, no recent git commits exist, the um, git repository was compiled and installed correctly, then it will go very fast over it the next time you run the same uh, kdsrc-build command line, so kdsrc-build kcalc. Because it doesn't do build, it, does re, uh, it doesn't do rebuilds, which means build everything from scratch, but it does builds, which means no translation, C++ translation unit has changed, there's nothing to build, there's nothing to link, there's nothing to install. And we're back at k archive now, when we move the mouse, hover over the UR, over the full path of this file, we get this underline effect, and if we press the control key, we can click on the full path of this file. So control click will open in Kate because that's the way we have configured console. So in mouse and then miscellaneous says text editor command is Kate. Okay, so Kate has started. Let's see what Kate um, sees as an error in here. No such file or directory as zstd.h, which tells me that we should install the RPM that contains the val packages for zstd. Okay, Control Shift T. Let's become super user. And we have a page in here that tells us how to install dependencies. Where is that? So one way to find it is to go to this page, community.k.org slash get involved development, where we were previously, when we clicked the set up a development environment with kdsrc minus build button, go at the very end of the page, and in here it says advanced topics on the more advanced topics page, and in here we find the what to do if CMake configure fails because a build dependency is missing, which takes us to another wiki page, which is get involved development installed the dependencies, and in here we'll find out how to how to fix issues where RPM packages are missing for Fedora. If we know the name of the package that we want to install, which is kcalc in this case, we should run this thing. Not Dolphin, but kcalc. Let's see what it proposes. It wants to install KF6 libraries, but it also wants to install things which are really legit, like lib upstream glib. Doesn't know anything about zstd devel. So let's go no, don't install anything. Is there an RPM package with the name GI Docgen installed?
the error says the name of this file zstd.h okay let's run this thing let's see if this works we have dnf repo query okay, it's like this and then the name of the file So I what I guess is that the package for kcalc in um, Fedora is very fresh, but then the kcalc git repository is even fresher than that. And then the dependency on zstd.h was just added recently, such that the kcalc RPM from uh, Medora does not yet depend on this thing. And uh, there's no zstd.h in all of Fedora. If I understand things correctly. Okay, so we have two DNF command lines, one which asks, is there a RPM package that contains a file like this? That's DNF repo query minus L. Then there's um, the RPM minus QA, which says, is there installed a package which has the name containing this string? And then there's a third one which is is there an rpm package that contains this thing in name anywhere in the git in the repositories of packages from fedora so let's use this command line dnf search is there a package that contains zstd yes there is what we want is something with devel There's a ton of them. So what we actually want is this thing. And we want to know if this package is already installed. And then grep lib zstd. Okay, so the library is installed, libstd, which means the SO file, but then the .h files, which are the C, C++ include header files, are not, include, no, are not installed, so we totally need to install this package. DNF, install, middle click paste, yes, and it upgrades It wants to upgrade the, the library ZSTD RPM. Transaction test. Rising devel, what is that? Can we remove this thing? Not really, because it uh, will destroy GTK. And Flatpak and GStreamer and basically everything.
I'm not sure how we'll overcome this thing, but not by uninstalling GTK and Z4 and Cinerama and a ton of X libraries, ATK, etc. No. I'm upgrading all of the RPM packages that are already installed on the computer using a DNF update. So there's 1128 RPM packages to download and install. Maybe this will fix some of the issues. After installing all of the updates finished, I'm trying to install libzstd devel and it works okay, hopefully. No, the same error. So this is a bug in Fedora 40 beta will be fixed by release time, hopefully, because uh, the reason of existence of libzstd devel is to provide the include files, so zstd.h and the package config file, and then another RPM from Fedora 40, uh, resin devel, also provides the package config for libzstd. That's a, an error will be corrected. Meanwhile, if I do uninstall of um, this wrong uh, RPM, which is the resin minus devel. It uh, down if it removes many pack many RPG um, uh, packages, but only of type minus devel. So I said, okay, let's go ahead. I've ins I've uninstalled uh, resin devel, and now I've installed uh, libzstd minus devel, and I'm trying to run the command line that we need to run previously again. So let's see how we do that. So that was uh, the SRC minus build initial setup. Okay, then first it installs Perl package dependencies of KDSRC minus build itself, and then it tries to install RPM packages for building. Okay, and uh, now it fails to install of the, because of the same reason. This package has been uh, renamed when it transitioned from uh, Qt5 to Qt6. Let's get the list of packages that we try to install using KDSRC minus build initial setup. Let's do the replace there. So the name of the package is um, with Qt6 in the middle. Okay, so this thing. Should be replaced with this thing. And we need to escape the parentheses. This is the command line that we're after. Control shift to B. Wrong replace. Control R. Place all. Control shift to B. Okay, and now we'll install 31 packages, which is exactly the devel packages that we uninstalled when we installed the wrong RPM. Exactly this is the list. Great. Now we can 
run kdsrc minus build kcalc again, so a third time. The module that failed is the KD Framework 6 K um, archive. Some of the Git repositories, when being built, not rebuilt, still do some work, which is probably a um, issue in those Git repositories. So when KDSRC minus build just builds the repository and there are no new git commits, it should not find any C++ translation units that have changed, it should not link, it should not install anything. Maybe there's some code generation happening there, maybe there's some transformation, some resizing of, of images, something like that. That happens each time, not only when you do rebuild, but also when you do build. Okay, and now we've unstuck. Here I've built correctly, and we have um, eight more Git repositories to build. Okay, so we have finished compiling and installing Kcalc. Let's run it now, but let's also use the verbose command line parameter, which is minus minus debug. Does not work like that. Okay, so kcalc has started correctly, and it's the one that we're expecting. which is the one from tilde slash kd slash usr slash bin slash kcalc. So the kd framework libraries, libkf6 are taken from tilde slash kd slash usr slash lib64. Wayland from the same place, other KD libraries, KF6 codex, and then um, compression libraries, X libraries, Qt libraries are taken from slash USR slash lib64. The executable itself from tilde slash KD slash USR slash bin slash kcalc. If we don't want to run this command, which is kdsrc minus build minus minus run kcalc, we have an alternative, which is the prefix file. It's not documented in here, but this is how you use it. You go source, I mean bash and uh, I need to get the prefix that's specific for kcalc. So that's tilde slash kd, it's in the build directory, and then kcalc, and then the file is named prefix.sh. This sets some environment variables, let's see exactly what it does. It sets the environment variable path, puts tilde slash kd slash usr slash bin at the start of the path environment variable. It also sets other environment variables which tell kcalc, hey, find your SO files. There's no need to tell uh, where to find the files because um, we're building with our path, so the executable knows that it should look into tilde slash kd slash usr slash lib64, that's why this uh, command line is commented out, it's not needed. 
if uh, we were building without our path, then we would need to unconnect this thing. But then it doesn't find additional things from uh, share, for instance, um, QML modules, Qt uh, plugins, Qt quick themes, etc. So that's USR share, USR at CSDG. KDUSR lib64 plugins, KDUSR lib64 QML, ilda slash KDUSR lib64 QML. If you set these environment variables yourself, then you can just run kcalc and the correct one will be preferred, which is this one. If we go which kcalc, those environment variables have been set on this line. It will find tilde slash kd slash usr slash bin slash kk first. And we can see that uh, we also have a kcalc executable installed from RPM when we installed Fedora 40 beta kd. So in slash usr slash bin slash kk. Okay. And now we just start kcalc and the correct one will be started with the correct dependencies, DLLs, fonts, settings, etc. themes. Okay. So the first step is for you to know how to build most of the KDE Git repositories. The next step is for you to know how to use the integrated development environment which I recommend, which is Qt Creator. So that's, um, where is it? somewhere in here. Okay. I cannot find the instructions that easily in um, that web page, but I can find it in the wiki. So community.kd.org slash get involved slash development and then ID configuration. Qt Creator. So it says in here where the this wiki page has been ported towards the web page, the uh, website developkd.org. Okay, the recommended one by me at least is Qt Creator, and I recommend that you use it at least for 80 hours so you know you learn use it correctly, how to install it correctly, how to build a KD, a KD Git repository using KDA SRC minus build correctly, and then how to load into Qt Creator that KD Git repository that was just built by using KD SRC minus build. And I also recommend that you use Qt Creator, the latest version from the upstream, which is the Qt.io website. Okay, so I recommend using the online installer. Let's see if uh, Fedora 40 comes with a Qt creator RPM, and let's see if that works. So DNF search Qt grep creator. ENF install Qt minus creator. This should also depend on CPP check and on the CLang libraries. 
Let's see if it works. I have never used before Qt Creator built by Fedora. Okay. Would you like to take a, Q, a quick UI tour? You should when you're learning Qt Creator. The use of Silang D was disabled because it is likely that memory requirements would be higher. But anyway. Okay. We have just built KD, uh, KCalc using KDSRC minus build. Let's go open. File open project. And we need to select the CMakeList.txt from the git clone. So that's KD, SRC, KCalc, and the file is find it. CMakeList.txt open. Whoa, whoa, what's in here? Okay, we should switch in the left sidebar to projects mode, which is this thing, control 5. We're already there. Under kits manual, remove anything except desktop default or Qt default. Remove all imported kits. So let's do that. Wow, what is this? What should remain? Nothing. I'll delete all of these. How? Okay, so I clicked on the manage button and it takes me to the Qt Creator settings, so the preferences, kids, and then I'm going to remove all of these temporary ones. What did I do? Okay, and only the desktop default remains. Okay, next up. I should import an existing build. The projects page, import existing build. And now we need the directory inside tilde slash kd slash build kcalc. Okay. CMake has been run automatically. We can see its output here. Is what we expect. Finds Qt 6.6.2 from RPM files in slash USR. It finds the KD frameworks version 6 that we have just built finds GMP and MPFR and it writes the correct directory to which is still the slash kd slash build slash kcalc. Okay. Next up on the projects page active project kcalc. So projects page, control five, this thing. And then uh, what do we do from here? This active project kcalc, okay. Then in the build and run section, this thing, you should see a kit named imported kit. Things have changed. Okay, we have build. In the build settings, this thing. 
edit build configuration says debug to great in the current configuration we want a batch edit Do we close this thing? Like this. Okay, so build settings, debug to current configuration, batch edit. We need to open the file, this one. Not in here. Translate the contents to the format that's recognized by Qt Creator, which means we go from this thing to this thing. So we need to remove export and space this thing, Control R and replace with nothing, replace all. We'll remove the not needed lines, Control X. and replace all equals with um, equals plus and we need to remove the colon previous environment variable variable this thing Okay, because equals plus prepends this thing at the start of the existing environment variable. So at the start of the existing environment variable path, prepends this thing. It's a different syntax that's supported by Qt Creator, and this is the syntax that's supported by Bash. Okay, in here we go control V. That's just for building. Let's go back to the wiki page. Maybe there's things are clearer here. And then we need to do a similar thing for run settings. So we're at projects, build and run, the correct kit, and then we go run. And then we need to select the CMake target in here. So not a test, but the actual executable. Okay. And then we go environment section, this thing. We expand the use build environment. A reset button is not enabled. We go batch edit and we paste again the same thing.
Okay. And now this button in the sidebar should say Project KCalc, Kit Desktop, Build Debug Tool, Deploy Deploy Configuration, Run KCalc. And that's it. We can start um, doing everything. So we can build and then run CMake. The output is in general messages. There's no errors. Next up, we can go from the main menu build and then this thing, build project a calc, control B. Compile output, tool window. Building is really slow because we did not specify that we want more than one CPU core to be used which we'll need to do. So projects mode under the build settings of the imported kit, build steps. This is the build steps. Click on the details. And in tool arguments, we need to go minus J and then how many CPU cores I have, which is 12. I'm not sure with, if with space or not. Let's do a rebuild and see if it's a bit faster. Build and then rebuild. And we can also see in the um, the system monitor application. At uh, CPUs, this thing. So we go build and um, rebuild, and it should use a ton of CPU cores. So. I can see I can see more than 10 being 100% usage when there is a C++ translation unit that can be compiled. Okay, this should be it. We've built using kdsrc minus build a kdgit repository kcalc. We've run it correctly kdsrc minus build space minus minus run space kcalc. We've loaded kcalc correctly in Qt Creator. We have run configuring Qt Creator, build, rebuild. We have configured it correctly. Now we can actually use the debugger. First of all, we can run the application without debugging. So it starts correctly. And in standard output says similar things, which uh, you can see them when you run uh, source, this thing and then key calc. Okay, so it says the same to lines. Mesa error and GLX failed. Okay, next up, let's uh, see if the debugger works correctly. This is the projects view. We could use the file system view, which one you want. We'll go with the projects view, which is the CMake. Um, targets view, the CMake target calc, the executable is from the source files, kcalc, cpp, and then we're selecting the symbol main. Put a breakpoint in here and click on the button start debugging of startup project. And um, the debugger breaks at the correct um, line, which is 2791, the first line inside of the body of the main function of the executable, which is the entry point of the executable. Okay, I do not know the shortcuts, shortcuts by hand. 
by heart. So continue F5, F10, F11, Shift F11. So similar to Visual Studio Code, which is what I like. F11. Doesn't go anywhere because we don't have CPP files for the Qt framework. We only have .h files for the Qt framework. F11 goes into a header file, .h files from the Qt framework, Shift F11, F11, Shift F11, F11, and at long last we're inside of the static method where we want it to be. Let's remove the, this breakpoint. Okay, so this is a static method, this is a class, there's many threads because we're inside of a cute application. Not really. These are just for painting. The um, main loop of Qt did not start yet. So I don't know what that is. Let's look at the call stack. In here, so the function main calls the static method set application domain from key localized string. We can go inside of the method static KLSP F11, whatever that thing is. We're inside of uh, Qt, so Shift 11, F11, and then F11. Okay, F10. This is a uh, setter. F11, F10, F11, static method initialize in uh, a key crash class. F11, so again, we do not have C CPP, C++ source code files for the Qt framework, which this thing belongs to. F10. Score config is process. I don't know what this thing is. Control click goes there. It's part of the Kcrash KD frameworks version 5. So this is a KD library, is in a totally different directory. So we're working inside tilde slash KD slash SRC slash Kcalc, whereas the CPP files for Kcrash are inside tilde slash KD slash SRC slash Kcrash from another KD Git repository. Okay, set application file path F11 goes there. Q string list, one of the containers from the Qt um, library. Q file abstraction over file access over um, Unix files, Windows files, etc., macOS files. Q object cast. Okay, where are we? It um, creates a socket full path, which is this thing. How do we look at it? By hovering slash around slash user 1000 slash kcrash 56688. We can also inspect local variables. How? Oh. Not sure. Right click. Add expression evaluator. Like this. And we can also hover on it and click on the pin button. Okay, should write metadata to disk. F11. A uh, 
static method in kcrash.cpp. In the other git repository, let's unpin this thing. Where are you? Okay, and now we're back into the main function of kcalc.cpp. So it's uh, preparing the about box, the command line um, parameters for kcalc, which show the um, authors and the version. And also the usage for the kcalc command line. This thing, internationalization, is from the KD framework version 6, K internationalization, is used for translating the string KD calculator into the correct language. Okay, so still about box. I'm pressing F10 which is uh, this button, step over. Okay, command line parser. And we're preparing to create the cute um, graphical user interface main loop, which is this exact Okay, so even though this is the last source code line, this is the last line in the executable in kcalc, this does not return until the user actually closes the application. You can close the application either from the start menu of the application, the close button, or from the start menu from the window icon, click on it and then click close, or Alt F4, or Control Q, or from the main menu of kcalc, quit, or from the KD Plasma desktop main panel, right click and then close. And uh, this is it. Once you know how to build many KDD repositories using KDSRC minus build, how to load them correctly in Qt Creator, how to debug how to use everything correctly in Qt Creator, integrated development environment, and you have used Qt Creator for real KD Git repositories for at least 80 hours, then you're graduating from the KD new contributors into the KD developers. Then you will have many of the questions about how to start programming for KD answered. You will know many, many things. Thank you.